if you could talk to to Vladimir Putin once again now, what kind of what, what kind of things would you talk about here? What kind of questions would you ask? Huh. Well, I, one thing I would certainly ask is what you were thinking on February 23. And I would ask him to reply to my question about what if you took this to phase two? You you surrendered in Donbass. You no know, no ego about it. You just surrendered. It's in your interest to your country. And you invited all the refugees from Donbass into Russia as much as they can. What would you do now? What's the what's the U.S. next move? And in your opinion, how are you going to? Okay, where are we going to go? That's that would be the key question because it's. But he didn't go that way. He chose to take the sanctions and and to go this way. Why he did that is a key question for our time. Uh, perhaps it was a mistake. Perhaps it was his judgment. Perhaps, as I said, but I don't. Knowing the man I did, I don't think so. I think it was calculated. Now this is projection and speculation, but there is something different about him in the past several months. It could be the COVID thing, the isolation that you mentioned. Yeah, I listened to a lot of interviews and speeches in Russian, mm -hmm. and there's uh, there's something about power over time that can change you, that can isolate you. Well, and when I was there, no, he'd been in office for already fifteen years. He had power. He didn't misuse it, in my opinion. He was very even. I saw him go on television and talk to his fellows the same way he always talked to them. Yeah. He grew with it. He grew in intelligence and knowledge because he had deal he had dealings with the whole world. Now people had come to him. He was very well known in Africa and Middle East, certainly Syria, and I I just never saw misuse of his power. I saw humility in him actually. So perhaps there was a calculation. And he calculated wrong in terms of what happens if he doesn't invade. Perhaps there was a calculation. Yeah. Perhaps he had a calm and clear mind and he calculated wrong. Well, he also made the point that he had the, the, the talk of Zelensky saying well, nuclear weapons were going to come into Ukraine. There was talk about that right before the invasion, too. And certainly that would have set off alarms. Uh, you know, the United States is already kind of doing that by not only putting its intelligence and its heavy weaponry into Ukraine, but you've got to deal with the question, the next question that comes up, the most immediate question is, is the United States going to start? And I'm, I'm saying this is good. They, they're making a lot of noise in the United States press about Russia using nuclear weapons and chemical weapons. That's a lot of noise. Again, going back to my analogy, when the United States starts that, it starts the conversation going. It's in the interest of the United States for Russia to be pinned with any kind of chemical or nuclear uh, incident. For example, it'd be very, not simple, but it would be possible to explode a nuclear device in Donbass, in Donbass and kill thousands of people. And we would not know right away who did it, but of course the blame would go right to Russia, right to Russia, even if it didn't make sense, if there was no motivation for it. It would just be blamed on Russia. The United States might well be the one who does that false flag operation. It would not be beyond them. They would, it would be a, a very dramatic uh, solution to sealing this war off as a major victory for the United States. That's terrifying. No, but it can happen. It can happen. And one kiloton device, low yield, this, it's possible. It's but certainly... when you walk across that line, you can potentially never walk back. Well, I think the United States is calculating that it's a dangerous, yes, I agree. But I think the neoconservative arrogance is such that they really believe they can push their advantage to the max now that because of all these propaganda successes up to now. The Ukrainian army could be wiped out for all we know. There's all that's left is their neo-Nazi brigades, but they're being advised very well by U.S. And they're sending the weapons in, or huge amounts of weapons. What about American budget? No one talks about how much money we're giving to Ukraine. We, we get, it's a billion dollars already in weaponry, and not most of it just poured in. What about, uh, you know, the, the Russian budget is... Uh, defense budget is 60 some billion dollars a year. It's nothing compared to the United States, one fifteenth of it. But yet we, we've put so much weaponry into Ukraine. The money we've spent, 
on Ukraine is all equivalent almost to what we spent on on uh, COVID in, a, in our own country. It's astounding the distortion of our priorities. Uh, there's also chemical. Don't forget, chemical is probably the easier way to go. But in Syria, there was far too many incidents of of America in its quest to demonize uh, Assad and the, the Russians of all these chemical attacks that were happening that they were vowing came from Russia. And uh, in spite of the fact that Russia just pulled out of the, uh, signed the agreement on chemical arms and, not, and apparently destroyed its stock several years ago. It's, it's strange that the, the strangest incidents happened in Syria. You go back to them, trace every one, Good journalism was done. The White Helmets got a lot of fame, but they were corrupted. And many good journalists tried to point out the inconsistencies in the American uh, uh, accusations. Robert Parry among them, uh, who was one of my mentors at Consortium Press. A lot of good journalists. You'd have to go back, but trace each, like you would trace each time you, they made an accusation against Putin of murder. It, you need that same kind of Sherlock Holmes intensity investigation and they don't do it because the united nations or the chemical not the united nations as much as the chemical people the uh, the organization has been tampered with if you remember correctly there was accusations that the chemical chemical uh, investigative unit i don't know the name of it was tampered with and people quit people who were working on that commission quit and said that this is not legit it's a very interesting that serious story is wacko so the United States is willing to use chemical in Syria freely. It did it three, four times. If you remember correctly, Trump was challenged that he did not attack after a chemical incident in Syria. Uh, all these newscasters in the United States, uh, the most heaviest of them were saying, well, pr President, Putin is, uh, President Trump is now finally acting like a real a president when he attacks, when he drops missiles in Syria. They actually said that. In other words, they wanted the, Trump to go to war on Syria, but he didn't. Chemical weapons, Chemical and nuclear. nuclear is really terrifying. Do you think, now combine this with the fascinating choice in your interviews with Vladimir Putin to watch Stanley Kubrick's uh, Dr. Strange. Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. And given the fact that, that you did that, now looking at the fact that the word nuclear, and it feels like, the world hangs on the brink of nuclear war. Do you, do you think that that's an overstating the case? No. That's what worried me from the beginning, and that's probably why I got involved in all this stuff, because I, I go back to the uh, uh, 60s when I was, a, you know, when we were so close to nuclear war. I lived through that period, and I thought, as, as many people did, that this was, it was going to come now. So I've lived through that, and some I didn't since the period in 83 when Reagan took us to the edge, if you remember correctly, Abel Archer it was an exercise that almost brought us to an, because the Russians were really paranoid at that point and they, res, they were responding to our military exercise on Abel Archer. There was also the Korean airliner they went down. There were numerous incidents in the 80s, but I never felt the fear. I thought Reagan was testing the limits, but perhaps if I'd been younger, I would have felt it. But anyway... No, we come close. The United States has risked this several times. I, if I told you, it would be hard for you to believe. If I could set a scene for you in a drama in, a, in, in 1962 when Kennedy has a meeting with the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the uh, CIA, and they talk about a plan, the military plan, to uh, first strike the Soviet Union and China. Okay, it was called... Uh, it was an Eisenhower plan that had been put into operate, put into op potential operation in uh, the f in early sixty or fifties, late fifties. SIOP sixty two. This was an attack on the Soviet Union. First strike. That's why the United States has never given up the concept of first strike. It's, it's interesting that the Russian policy, nuclear policy posture is more defensive than the American one, which leaves options open. It's the same options that are open in neoconservative uh, agreements that we see from the late 90s where they say the emergence of a rival power will not be tolerated. That's a very broad statement and it allows you to do a lot. 
including nuclear. So you, you have to understand the United States is always, first of all, it breaks so many treaties. I mean, we know that from the Putin story about the yeah. uh, anti-ballistic missile treaty in 2002 and then the INF treaty of, the they broke that one. That was the intermediate missile. Uh, that was 2019. I don't know when they broke it off. But the United States has not been very faithful on its nuclear agreements. And so... <laughs> I don't know that we can even deal with the United States diplomatically. It seems to be impossible. Now, brings me to Biden. <laughs> yes, which, and this is the another opposite. Irishman. This is the opposite of Kennedy. Kennedy was a Catholic Irish anti-imperialist. Biden seems to be the opposite. He seems to be a go along, get along, go along guy who's been not only old, but he's also gone along with this program, which I voted for Biden because I, I feared Trump. But I thought Biden at a certain age would mellow. I really did. He's not mellowed, apparently. He's still listening to these people, and he believes them. And it seems that his uh, that horrible woman, Victoria Nuland, who was Undersecretary of State, he appointed her to, to, the, to this sector of the world. She's very influential, and she's been one of the worst people on Ukraine. She obviously was behind the coup. She's, she was the one who boasted that, uh, you know, we got our man in, Yats, whatever it is, Yats, Yatsenuk. And also, remember the famous statement, fuck the EU, all these things. She's, but she's back, and she said the other day about if the Soviets, if the Russians use uh, nuclear weaponry of any kind, there's going to be a horrible price to pay. That was uh, She was out of the blue. I said, what the hell is she doing? She's talking nuclear all of a sudden. And then since that day, Everybody in the U.S. press, all the shows have gone, talk nuclear, nuclear, nuclear. Secretary of State has done it. Uh, uh, Blinken. Uh, it's, it scares you. If you think about it, the United States scares me. So that's the military industrial complex machine, fully functional, fully operational behind this whole thing. Certainly is that is. is that what's to blame? It certainly is. That's why I showed him Strange Love because I wanted him to show him. I wanted Mr. Putin to say, "Look at this film. You never saw it. How can you not say you know? It's a it's a seminal film in American history yeah. to those people who care, and it shows you the Kubrick had a anti had a pacifist, thank God, anti war sem, sem, uh, mentality, which he showed in Paths of Glory as well as Strange Love, and it's such a dire, well done scenario that. I wanted Mr. Putin to be aware of the way the United States thinks. Yeah, the absurdity of escalation, the absurdity of war at the largest scale, the absurdity of nuclear war especially. Can we walk back from the brink of nuclear war? Can we? Can we? Yes. Yes. What's the path to walk back? Reason. <laughs> reason Between and, who and Reason who? and diplomacy. There's no reason. I mean, talk to the guy. Mr. Biden, sh why don't you calm down and go and talk to Mr. Putin in, in Moscow? Why don't you just sit across the table from him and try to have a discussion without falling into ideologies and stuff like that? 